Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chuck Fruy Uncorked. To my left, Ariana Suchia, the Grom Psalm. To my right, Kali, the Diva. <laughs> and I'm Chuck. So we're going to do a Wine of the Week session right now, but we're going to do, a, again, a very different approach like we did on a previous episode. And we're going to ask Ariana to taste the wine blind. So and she does Kali. And Kali. You'll also be tasting along with me, yeah. also blind. With Ar you, yeah. Ariana yeah. Parana and Kali are going to taste this wine blind together. And again, the object is not to identify the grape, the soil, the vintage, the producer, or all those other things. That, that's not what's important here. Our focus is, I just want uh, Ariana to break down the wine as she would, uh, her methodology of you know, the smell, the taste, et cetera, so she can remember all the different components better moving forward. To comment on that too, that was my favorite, one of my favorite episodes was when you, what was the wine that we, that you blind tasted? That was the Sylvaner yeah. episode, yeah, From right? Germany. Yeah. yeah, the Hans Wurschen. So this also gives us an opportunity to taste a wine that you normally would not consider. It's, it's something out of your com uh, comfort zone, but perhaps if you listen to her describe the wine and Kali to describe the wine from his perspective, it might entice you to go out and try this wine, you know, um, on your own. So that's the whole purpose. So I, I'm going to give both of you a hint. This wine is white. Okay. You don't say. Yep. Well, the purpose is to have fun here. So we're going to keep this really light, fun, food friendly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I just like to start, um, if you're at home, I personally like to just hold it over a little bit of white so I can see white the on. color. White on. White on. <laughs> um, write this down, then you can write on. <clears throat> um, what does the color tell you specifically? So for me, it helps distinguish sometimes varietals. It can even be something like different um, winemaking methods that get introduced. <clears throat> um, sometimes you could see something like bubbles, which mm. is known as gas. So for me, I don't see any gas in this wine and I don't see any sediment or anything like that. Um, it's pretty clear, um, but it has, it's a nice straw color, but mm. has a little bit of almost a copperish tinge to mm. it. That's key because a lot of wines like Chardonnay would be more in the yellow zone. Mm -hmm. And wines like uh, perhaps Chenin Blanc or Riesling will have a greenish, Green. tin, greenish tinge to the yellow. If you look at this one, she's absolutely right. I it has one of those white pieces. Absolutely. Paper, so it has a copper kind of hue to it. You know, it's very interesting. It's like this cool copper brass, but not so much that it's a golden rod in your face mm -hmm. and it doesn't make it look heavy. It's not in terms of um, masking. Or and the copper color is pretty light. Yes, it's well, a right? faint, yeah. very beautiful tinge. Yeah. So let's just bring that up to the nose. Oh, wow. Um, oh. I get... <laughs> oh, <I> <laughs> sound <laughs> effects. That's all you need for descriptors, guys. It's, um, I would say, like a, almost a delicate floral yes. element to it um like almost like a very light jasmine or peacocky lay or something yeah. but something where it's not um overly unctuous in your face it's just light pretty kind mm -hmm. of like wafting through the air enticing Perfume. it's very Perfumey. enticing it's very fragrant yeah. mm -hmm. it's very perfumed it's yeah. very aromatic mm -hmm. it's very uplifting you know instead of just smelling apple pineapple pear yes yes so that jasmine <laughs> peacocky yeah. lay smell but Beyond that, there is um, almost like a very slight honey note mm -hmm. without it being overly like a syrupy kind of honey, just like maybe like a honeysuckle kind of thing. And to me, although the fruit is quite uh, tropical and exotic, mm. there's a limeness, like a lime skinness to it. You know, it's a high tone lime. Or even a lime pierces. pits a little yeah. bit for me. Yeah. Uh, maybe even some calamansi or something mm. in the back. Okay. Um, let's try the palette. I'm taking notes. It's very <laughs> important. So I know that we mentioned like this honeyness and this tropical fruit, aromatic and type of thing, but I want to emphasize tasting this wine blind as ripe as those fruits smell and as honeyed as it smells on the palate, it's still <clears throat> mineral for me. So and it's not overly sweet. Either. Yeah. For me, it's dry. It's dry. Yeah. It's very dry and, and it's, acid. And it's refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very refreshing. So some people would think that because of the honey mm. aromas, because of the tropical fruit and floral characteristics of this wine in the nose, they're going to expect some kind of sweetness on the palate. This wine is not sweet. Deceptive. So it's to, dry. to bring that up, because honestly, it's, it is... Um, 
Like, because when you do smell it, you're already going into it thinking that it's going to be sweet. Right. What indicates that it is dry? Just on your palate, there's no sugar. There's no sugar present. It's just dry. It's, there's an absence of sugar. So it's fermented dry to me. So um, in the wine community, we would refer to sugar that's left in the wine as residual sugar or RS. And I don't perceive any actual leftover sugar in so my mouth. So this wine is dry. Hence it being dry, crisp, refreshing, all in that camp. Um, for me, this wine is like a very pretty um, Miss Hawaii Hula wearing a peacock ele, and she's very mysterious, but <laughs> has a beautiful smile. <laughs> Whoa. Girl. <laughs> I don't Talk know about what your scripters. <laughs> I don't know what you're drinking, but oh my God. It's beautiful. That was a great story. <laughs> okay, that so why is it beautiful on your palate? I think it's beautiful because it has as rich as and unctuous as the honey smells on the nose or those ripe fruits. It's uh, a hula dancer that's light on its feet. You know, it okay. has like this buoyancy through it. Okay. Um, it has mm -hmm. like that. I'm I'm having a hard time actually describing what type of minerality. I'm not getting necessarily like. I don't know if it's sandiness or stoniness, but I think that there is some sort of. Um, earthiness in that component, not necessarily organic, but an actual like mm. rocky mm -hmm. smell and taste to it. And Kelly, what do you get? Um, well, for me, some, so we just had our first wine study sesh on Monday and e. something that was, um, that I was trying to focus on that I had a hard time identifying was acidity. Mm. Um, so that to me that there is acid to this wine. Yes, um, I would say it's medium to medium high. Yeah. I mean, it salivates. You're yeah. Right. It makes your mouth yeah. salivate. So. Yeah. so what that does is, think about that. Squeeze when you bite into a squeeze yeah. of, uh, when you bite into a lemon or suck on a lemon, mm -hmm. it stimulates your saliva, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. So it gets your digestive juices going. So uh, in other words, this wine could be a possible candidate for aperitif, for starting your evening, cocktails mm -hmm. before dinner, because mm -hmm. it's going to stimulate your appetite, you know. But not blow it out, because yeah. this is not overly alcoholic or mm -hmm. anything for me either. But, but alcohol, you know, like satiates, satiates. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. it, it numbs, you know, it uh, deadens. Mm -hmm. So this wine is very stimulating in yeah. that it's very uplifting to begin your meal with, mm -hmm. right? And because of the acidity then, you, then you can incorporate all the different kinds of shellfish and fish because this would act kind of like a squeeze of lemon with mm. it, right? I would definitely serve this wine by the glass at a Zoe restaurant because it's by the beach and it's something that people might want to start their, you know, day with, you know, right after going in the ocean and they just want to have some of our like fresh lobster yeah. or something mm. like that. Yeah. So how much would you pay for this wine in a store? In a store, if I was going to buy this wine by the bottle, um, I'd be willing to spend a lot more, but I think um, knowing Chuck is very good with value, I think it'd be around $25. Right. And how about you, Kelly? I am going to uh, air out some dirty laundry. I actually saw the bottle of oh, wine because okay. <laughs> we didn't think that I was going to I didn't think I was going to be on this. I would probably pay, but also what Ariana said, knowing you, I'd probably pay about $18 a bottle for this. Okay. So I bought this at Tomorrow's in, uh, on Wailai. Okay, Kaimuki. Yeah, Kaimuki. And uh, it was 15 something a bottle. Wow. 15 what something a, a bottle in a store. <clears throat> so, yeah. can we actually reveal the wine? I'm yes. dying to know um, because I'm going to go get some. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> this thing very, is. It's very, very tasty. So, Thank this comes you. from uh, the country of Greece. Oh. Oh, this yes. comes from the southern part, which is called the Peloponnese. And the grape variety is called Mascafilero. So, Mascafilero, we featured this on. One episode that that Cheryl just, if you recall, she marinated some pork shoulder. Yeah. She marinated an olive oil, <clears throat> garlic, and some fresh herbs for like, uh, first she brined it for two hours, one hour a pound, right? Mm -hmm. Brine means a combination of water, sugar, and salt. And she brined it for one hour per pound. And then she marinated overnight with garlic, olive oil, and fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. Right, she marinated overnight, and then uh, she cooked it. If you remember, in the oven. Yeah. And then the last moment, she squeezed some lemon over it, and then put some fresh, excuse me, some dry oregano on top for the aromatics. So if you recall, the aromatics of this wine totally connect with the aromatics <clears throat> of fresh uh, or dried herbs. And also stood up to the pork shoulder yes, as well. Because you can see this thing has a little bit of bitterness innately to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why something like that pork 
This is the wine that you can go with it. And it's just a simple dish that you can cook at home as a reminder again. You're just going to make a solution of um, one quart of water and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt. Depends on what recipe you want. And you just one, one hour for one pound. And well, then at, overnight, you, you marinate it with the olive oil, garlic, and fresh herbs. That's it. And you just cook in the yeah. oven. This is actually a great wine of the week because I don't think we actually aired that. Oh, episode perfect. that we tasted this on um and for 15 dollars, it is so steal. delicious in our hot climate like this right mm-hmm. imagine this wine you know th- they've proven that these vineyards and down there in the Pel- peloponnese <clears throat> was cleared by the romans way way back when before christ you know and so and not the romans but just they were cleared and planted before christ and so the whole point of this is that this this these this grape and this Vineyard land has been around for a long time. It's yeah. not a new phenomenon. It's oh. not new some fandango thing, and so you know one of Greece, one of their specialty food uh, dishes is souvlaki. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You know, and so this is the wine that I would <clears throat> pair with souvlaki. You because know, with the herbs and yeah, yeah, I think and the lemon That's... squeezed onto the pork or the chicken at the last moment. I think it's just perfect for mm. that. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Domain Skouras is run by Giorgio Skouras, who's Burgundian trained. He's one of the new uh, age winemakers that is going to take Greece onto the world stage in terms of quality wines, especially at great prices. Again, 15 plus, 1560, I think it's 69 in the store. I think that's a great value and something that you can be enjoyed that you might not have tried before. There's a couple of other Moscafleros available in Hawaii right now, uh, but they don't come close to this in quality at all. This is like one of a kind. He also makes another Moscafalero that he calls, um, what does he call it? He calls it uh, Salto, S-A-L-T-O. Oh, yeah. And that is a different strain. It's a different type of vine of muscaflero. It's a, it's a mutation of muscaflero. So it's higher pitched. It's, it's, it's more limey, not, not as tropical. And it, he, while yeast ferments that wine, it's electric. It's just so, it has so much pizzazz and, and liveliness. You can find both in stores, uh, Again, I bought this at Tamora's, but I also know that uh, I saw it also at... Uh, our field. Our field, Kailoa. And then I saw the Salto at Fujioka. Yeah, so... Go you know, find Domain Skiras. I'm going to go try that Salto. I'm yeah. going to go buy Domain Skiras, and then Michael can cook the pork. So <laughs> there you that's, go. Cl- that's an even trade, right? <laughs> As a diva would say. <laughs> so that's our episode for Wine of the Week. And uh, we hope you tune in next time. Until then, aloha, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.